and the great god Moloch has turned from us in anger. We have not worshipped this strange god. The other gods would not have caused these calamities to punish us. Demetra, beloved wife, you implored me. I gave you an altar to your god. Please let my people return to their deity, the great earth goddess, the mother of us all. So the child you carry in your womb, now the future king, will never make sacrifice to this bloodthirsty monarch. I will, my king. This I promise you. On the head of your firstborn child, your precious daughter, Medea. Love her, Demetra. As if she were your own child. Your own flesh. Alright, so the plot here um, comes to mind. If he is, this king that's passing away is the follower of an earth goddess, right? And the queen here is a follower of the dog god, Moloch. And he's saying, raise my son in the ways of this earth goddess. How does this child once it's born ends up being a demigod that is the reincarnation of Moloch unless there's a portion they're not telling you here somebody performed a ritual invoking the spirit of Moloch when the stars were in their correct constellation to have that seed be the body in the flesh of Moloch walking on earth when he was allowed to be released from his cage. Your own blood. Asterionis. You are to lead my people to a new land away from this ill omen spot. Have them settle in another land where they can rebuild what was once here. Let my scene Rise again. Let him rest forever in the old Mycenae. to our 
Thomas Morlock, powerful and invincible God, Pentheus offers you this young and beautiful maiden, deign to find her worthy of you. His prayer is this. He leads the soldiers of Mycenae. May they return to us enriched with hostages and laden with booty to your greater honor and glory. Now do I invoke you, O Moloch. the first time I said this, he hunts them in his underground lair that he lives in. Like, it's some type of Hunger game stuff. Um, he hunts them with the bow and arrow and stuff like that. And like I said, uh, he's deformed, so uh, he wears the uh, the dog mask of Moloch, but he's supposed to have the supernatural powers of Moloch, and that's why they're praying to him, so he grants them to win their battles. He'll, his spirit's on their side, whatever. So... If you look on the front of his shield over his uh, chest, there's a lion on his, right? Now, I want you to see the, uh, the uh, and this is supposed to be Hercules, which, I mean, I have a sneaky suspicion. Hercules, to me, just might be Samson. I just have this weird feeling that Hercules is actually Samson of the Bible. And just like I said, I feel like there's portions of Moses' life and history that they're lying or not telling us. And they're giving us a version that they feel will satisfy us. They're doing the same thing with Samson. But, I mean, it's hard to prove it yet. Um, but that's one of the reasons why I've just been so into this Hercules stuff. Is because I just got this strange feeling. Hercules is Samson being repackaged and sold and taught to us in, in a different viewpoint. So, remember, this one's of a lion. Um, this is the kingdom Hercules is coming from. Now, look at this, right? Look at this right here. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, Let me see if I can screenshot. Look at his shield. Tell me that does not look like the people from uh, um, those, uh, was it Benin in Africa? Where they have like all the, uh, they have all the um, plates that are buried in the ground. Uh, of them wearing garms and, and shields and riding horses and stuff like that. Uh, stuff that uh, you'd ask to ask, why are they hiding this or burying this stuff, right? Bear with me for a moment, all right? 